I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack Born a rock star in this life, gone live it up on the attack Baby, I'm bad, I just wanna get caught up in this life I'm crazy, I'm mad, doing no cap Only God wants you, better go live it up, cash in the bag Stadium pack, baby, I'm It was pain <laughs> The burning of the soldering iron type wood burner so if you have got one of them soldering iron type wood burners beware that if you are wood burning for like four five six hours however long you get lost in your wood burning that soldering iron type unit could get very hot and burn your fingers so and i upgraded to a uh, a Japanese style one on Amazon next uh, about 60 odd quid I kept that one for a while it was quite a good one you know wire tips where you screwed your tip into the end you know, the temperature gauge and so it wasn't the most stable unit but it was really good for learning with and I was seeing all these pieces of art on Facebook as I joined all these groups, you know, getting into pyrography, trying to learn how to do it. And I've seen like these amazing pieces of art. I thought, wow, how the heck did they do that? You know, there was me and a crappy my wife stuck at it a dobby piece I did on a board and it's awful but at the time I thought it was really good and she still likes it but so I delved deeper into it and then lockdown came didn't it at the time I was a window cleaner and I had no art background whatsoever I still haven't got any art background no art background whatsoever but when the lockdown came I had to have something to do definitely not one for sitting around so I decided that pyrography was going to be my full time unpaid job and my mission was to start trying to create more and more realistic looking art and I would spend seven eight hours a day and maybe more wood burning seven days a week and that went on for maybe just over two years <laughs> wood burning every day and I learned so much in that time I at the time I was look, looking on a group called Drawing With Fire by Valerie. She's no longer friends with me, she fell out with me thinking that I've done things to her, but that's by the by. Um, and so I was a part of that group. And they were running, you know, YouTube tutorials and stuff. And I just used to like listening to it in the background as I was practicing. You know, the best way to learn pyrography is to sit and practice. And I used to just love listening to them chatting while I was burning away. And then the guy who invented the Optima said to me, You want to start teaching? Uh, pyrography a bit you know as I got a bit better and better I thought I'd maybe give it a go so I set up a YouTube channel but YouTube is ridiculous isn't it you need like a million fucking subscribers and 10 million hours watched before you're allowed to go live on it where TikTok you can spend a week or so a couple of days 
following people and getting I don't know what happened there then. And something weird happened there. It freaked out and asked me to share with my wife. And then she said she's not even on TikTok. So I don't know what went on there. I knew who I was up to. Yes, so this, this guy says to me, I want to start teaching. Pyrography, so... I have a YouTube channel which is called Pyrography for Beginners and Beyond by Flames Pyro and I've got over a hundred videos on there now for beginners and, pe and people who are a bit more advanced as well to take pyrography to the next level, things to think about and you know, things you need to expand your mind with, your creative eye with, when you're creating your pyrography. And here's an opportunity to show like a, a ruffle of fur going off. under there and then this part will be shaded and it'll get that piece too high curl you just won't capture it properly you'll zoom past it Once you've zoomed past, you've gone past, and then it's getting the sandpaper out if you've gone too far. That's why it is a, a, all art forms are a patience art form. You know, You can do some wood burns, maybe if I was to do a name of someone, it would take me an hour or two because I wouldn't just crank my heat unit up to like what six. I mean, the optimum goes up to ten. If you put your pen at ten, it's going to be glowing red hot and you're just going to touch down and you're just going to go Shh, and make a big fucking blob. And we call it arsonography, not pyrography. When you see the glowing red pens, avoid that. And the pressure you put down when you're creating your pyrography, it's just the pressure of your pen. You know, it's... You're not pressing down and like gouging the wood. You're just gliding your pen over it because you've sanded your wood to like what I usually do is get the mouse sander out first. And I take that bit of a layer off where all the divots are on you. This is a piece of birch ply. 
and sand it down then go through the grits until you get to like say 2000 grit sandpaper over and over until it's like a piece of glass and then your pen will just glide over the surface and that's all you're doing you're not pressing down with any force you're just gliding I only start doing this Mr. Fox because I don't know why I have this way of things pop into my head about wildlife and how foxes are all around us yet we never get to see them. They live in a town near you and <laughs> they live right next to you. They come scavenging around the streets and alleys but you never see them during the day do you? So I've called this piece the elusive Mr. Fox. And because I hadn't been an animal for a while, I thought the wolf would burn a fox. And I need to get you on the right into the right camera position because have them on you have your phone on bloody charge and the leads in and as per usual I don't think about stuff I just dive in and start it without tidying up and getting ready here down this eye area this has to go darker because it's right in the corner and this part of the face is curling round and you know it's coming from into the corner out to the front and then curling back off into the mane of fur if you like same when you're doing like a lion or a tiger or whatever same sort of different or a long haired dog a chihuahua whatever and another thing to think about is the animals have like an eyebrow a raised area and usually you find there's a dip here on it and there's a darker shaded area around here and then all this has to all be blended to marry up the rest of the piece so remember it's not high heat there's no pressure at all being put into this it's just barely the weight of the pen just gliding and as you lift off the pen is building more heat into it so when you touch down again you will get a darker burn stroke to start with where if you keep let's say here for example keep the pen on the wood it starts getting lighter and lighter because the heat is getting sucked out of the pen into the wood in it so we do short strokes that's why we lift off only for a fraction of a second just lift off let a bit of heat build back into the pen and then touch down again so 
I say we're not looking for individual strands of hair, we're just looking for flowing blocks. There's opportunities to add some detail and depth and make the most of them and use them and it will really make your piece stand out. The more work you put in, the more you will get out of it. set a few tails going off in different directions and throwing stuff we have a group on, py on Facebook as well called Pyrography for Beginners and Beyond High Flames Pyro request to join the group got a couple of thousand members in it where we run monthly competitions I set a theme for all the sort of even well up to all levels of wood burner set a theme for the month and if you want to take part in the pyrographer of the month challenge then you submit your entry by the closing date and then we show all the entrants from the different uh, skill levels you know from beginners right up to the advanced masters and the group then votes on the favourite piece out of all the ones shown because we have to have just one Pyrography of the month. No one's a loser on the group. We don't have losers, we just have runners up. They're all brilliant entries. And then the winner gets a certificate and a rosette that they can just put up near their pyrography station and say they're an award winning pyrographer. And it just gives them a bit of a boost. And a bit of happiness. And it also, if you've got an artist block, which we often get when you finish your piece, that it's like, you think, oh shit, what do I do now? You know, I've been doing that piece for like two weeks or something. Or, however long you've got into it for and then suddenly it ends and you're completely lost again unless you're taking commissions and then you're on to your next commission I suppose but if you haven't got a commission and you're just wood burning for the fun of it then quite often it's hard to find what to do next so with a monthly challenge, it gives people a purpose if they're searching for one to have a go. And this month, it is birds of prey. It's set for the challenge, so it should be a good one if we get some good entrance into any bird of prey. So I'm still putting this curling here. Maybe because I didn't go to art school, um, it takes me longer to think about the right tones and shading. I don't know. Maybe those that went to art college or university just understand it a lot quicker than what I do the 
because I've got buckets and buckets of patients. I can just sit there for days on end and just get lost. It's a great therapy, this pyrography. I know there's a guy I'm talking to at the moment from America who's a next vet army veteran, PTSD and you know, depression and stuff that a lot of soldiers suffer from and his wife bought him a pyrography set for him to try and see if he can help relieve you know, some of his mental health issues and it does help because I personally I suffer from clinical depression and I know if I was sat there watching TV on my ass all day then it wouldn't be good for me within days going a downward spiral so this hobby keeps my mental health in check do take commissions for portraits of anything people I did the last one I did was a lorry but you might have seen it on one of my videos a lady a, a boyfriend had this timber lorry that meant the world to him and so she commissioned me to wood burn the lorry with all the timber on the back. That was a good uh, adventure for a couple of weeks. I think we were just about 14 days or something for that one. Because I had to set the truck going back off into the distance so that was a good challenge and if you get to the level where you're competent with your pen then set yourself ridiculous challenges maybe that are way beyond your skill level I mean stuff like this is beyond my skill level I set myself harder challenges because you learn more if you do something dead easy that you've done a million times and you just burn in some words in or whatever and you, you know you've done it before then there's no challenge I'm just going to move the wood sideways as we look shading off the back end of this this is white for on the actual um, transfer I did and when you're transferring your wood burning use graphite paper I've got a video on uh, YouTube of how to make your own homemade piece of graphite paper and that piece of graphite paper will last you for maybe a year or more one sheet of A4 printer paper and a graphite stick or a soft B grade pencil is what you need but ideally a graphite stick it's a lot quicker than using a pencil and you just layer it up and up and up and you don't know where it's gone wait a minute thank you let's see you a mess and you end up with that and that will transfer the pattern out into the wood and the good thing with it is 
the lines are so easily erased you can still see them quite clearly and once it starts to fade you know you do a transfer and you can hardly see the lines anymore get your graphite stick out rub over it again add more layers of graphite and it'll just keep going I had a piece that lasted for I think it was over two years and it was still going strong it just kept refreshing the layers of graphite onto it and it saves you from buying that transfer paper and that white but the worst thing you can use with pyrography is that carbon paper you know blue stuff don't use that because if you use that and you finish your piece of pyrography and you're really chuffed with it and you've got these blue lines everywhere where you transferred everything that you wanted Searching for greatness in a sea of the dying and shameless, uh, a sea of the aimless, I don't wanna be one of